Well, good morning. This is uh, Ian Irene. It's the morning of Thursday, January 24th, 2019. And uh, I don't normally do a morning live stream on a Thursday, but uh, this morning I felt somewhat compelled to come out in these uh, just about uh, zero degree conditions. It's a little bit crunchy underfoot. And I'm um, here up on the uh, edge of Epsom Downs in the southeast of England. Well, the title of the this morning's uh, broadcast is Fracking Ignorant Cowboys. And uh, uh, I was actually scanning through this morning's uh, newspapers, although newspapers, of course, is a bit of a misnomer. The reason I scan them is to see what lies the uh, lamestream media are pumping out to the gullible masses. And um, I came across this article written by um, Stephen Glover. And it says, we're sitting on a gold mine, yet ignorant politicians risk the lights going out in our country. Well, talk about ignorant hack. We'll come back to Mr. Glover in a second because uh, he might be a little bit embarrassed by this article once he realises what occurred yesterday at West Newton in East Yorkshire. And of course, this is uh, my old adversary, Rathlin Energy, chaired by David uh, Montague Smith. And uh, Rathlin Energy is the epitome of a cowboy company. And uh, because it's registered, um, its parent company is registered offshore in the Channel Islands, and the parent company of that parent company is registered uh, in the um, offshore islands in the West Indies. None other than the Cayman Islands, would you believe? So, what's occurring here? Well, David Montague Smith um, and Rathian Energy have returned to West Newton, which was the scene of a well blowout back in, well, sorry, no, the scene of a well fire. They lost control of the well while pressurizing the well, getting ready to frack. And um, having lost control, having had to deal with fire in the hole, they had to bring in uh, specialist resources from Aberdeen to deal with the problem, and the well was eventually shut in. Um, but uh, Rathen Energy have uh, kept their access to the well site at West Newton, and they keep going back to um, East Riding Council to get permission to extend their stay there. And now they've returned and they've uh, just started to drill a second well. Well, there's also uh, a monitoring camp there, uh, which uh, apparently East Riding Council are seriously thinking about uh, initiating eviction proceedings. Well, yesterday, um, there was an incident at that well site and eyewitnesses and the early eyewitness reports said that it looked as though a, a feed pipe to the wellhead, uh, feeding the mud down to the drill bit, broke loose, swung around, smashed the windows on the control cabin, covered some of the uh, uh, site workers in what looked like drilling mud. They were running around the uh, site, coughing and spluttering, and um, obviously eventually uh, switched the pumps off and got it back under control. Now, it was actually one of the people monitoring, I believe, who called the fire brigade. And the fire brigade came out and um, you know did a sort of quick scan. And obviously were told by the site workers that there's nothing to see here, nothing to worry about. Um, just, uh, you know, don't know why you were called out, really. Let's just see if we can clean this lens a bit here. I think we've got a bit of a bit of mush there. There we go. Um, nothing to see here. And uh, it, one of the uh, firemen allegedly uh, actually came out and said to one of the observers, I'm not sure why you called us. This seems to be a uh, well-run well site. <laughs> Well, you know, if you believe that, then you know, please contact me uh, because I've got some really, really nice beachfront property in the centre of Birmingham that uh, I'm sure you'll be very interested in investing in. Well, 
Subsequently, Rathian Energy I issued a report stating that it was just a water hose that, that broke loose. You know, and there's nothing to see here. Well, the Environment Agency apparently were on site later in the afternoon, and it'll be interesting to see whether the Environment Agency are fooled by the blag of the Rathlin workers. Now, this, by any definition, was a major operational failure, an MOF. And uh, at the very least, either the uh, hose in question um, was not properly certified, certainly uh, maybe not recently, um, or it hadn't been fixed properly uh, to its coupling. Either way, this is a serious issue and could have been a lot more serious. But of course, uh, Rathian Energy and uh, the pro-fracking establishment uh, will probably do everything they possibly can to cover this up. But you know, let's wind the clock back a little bit because David Montague Smith, as chairman of Rathen Energy, was also, a few years ago, chairman of the West Northamptonshire branch of the Campaign for the Protection of Rural England. And whilst he was in that role, he was instrumental in lobbying Tory MPs to lobby David Cameron to remove subsidies for renewables, and in particular, wind farms. And of course, David Montague Smith had a vested interest in removing these subsidies because he was heavily uh, invested in potential for fracking. Now, in any other world, this would be regarded as corruption, but uh, in the corporatist uh, estate, it's simply regarded as another way of doing business. And, uh, you know, it's one of the reasons that I'm still waiting for Campaign for the Protection of Rural England, CPRE, to actually acknowledge the fact that they allowed this to go on under their noses. So while CPRE appear to be taking a much harder line against unconventional gas exploitation, it is primarily due to CPRE leadership or lack of leadership that allowed David Montague Smith in his capacity as chairman of the West Northamptonshire branch CPRE to undermine the renewables agenda. And, um, you know, of course, I have to declare a little bit of skin in the game here because it was also wrath in energy that uh, tried to pursue me into bankruptcy. A long story, but it didn't work out as uh, Rath in Energy had intended. And uh, in fact, as uh, part of that campaign, I was able to expose, although few people comprehend, but I was able to expose the fraud of the Sestwi Kiwi um, process in this country. Anyway, bottom line is um, that ultimately I wasn't bankrupt. And uh, so David Montague Smith, they're back at West Newton. They're back with, obviously, maybe a, a different team of cowboys than they were with uh, back in uh, 2014. But this is precisely why this industry must never get a foothold in this country. Uh, you know, they've proven that they are not capable of doing this safely. They are not capable of doing uh, or, or firing up the frack pumps without triggering significant seismic events. And then you've got tired hacks who probably should have been put out to pasture some time ago, like Stephen Glover. I'd love to know who um, uh, pushed his buttons here to write this piece. We're sitting on a gold mine, you ignorant politicians risk the lights going out on our country. No, it's ignorant politicians and ignorant hacks that are putting this country at risk by pushing this agenda. And you know, it's all very well talking about what's occurred in the US, but you notice how these hacks conveniently ignore all of the negative environmental and health impacts that are now proven to have occurred as a result of this industry, basically wherever it's established a footprint, whether it's the US, Canada, Australia, or elsewhere. So Stephen Glover, I hope that you are made to feel ashamed of this article. You clearly didn't do any research. It looks like you had lunch with John Egan, and on the back of that lunch, you bought into all the BS 
that he trotted out. And I'm sure Francis Egan probably paid for that lunch. How cheap you are. Nothing but a media whore. So, obviously, the whole fracking issue hasn't yet gone away. And, you know, th there's no doubt here that once we do exit the EU, and we will exit the EU because if we don't, there will be massive civil unrest in this country. And, uh, you know, maybe the politicians sitting in their Westminster bubble don't fully comprehend the strength of feeling all around the country. 17.4 million people voted to get out and an increasing number of people who voted to remain now see the disdain with which the EU treats the UK and say, you know what? Actually, we just need to get out. And preferably, we need to get out with no deal. I mean, whoever it is that wants to take no deal off the table, either wants to remain or clearly has zero experience of negotiation. So no deal must remain on the table and no deal must be the prospect for uh, the end of March. And from that point forward, then, you know, the politicians, the civil servants and industry leaders should be doing what they should have been doing over the last two and a half years, which is working with countries on a one to one basis all around the world, using the World Trade Organization as the basis or start point for discussions. So, you know, when you've got the likes of Yvette Cooper, the partner of Ian Balls, of course, who famously was uh, Gordon Brown's uh, advisor and uh, consequently, you know, didn't see what was coming down the road like a steam train back in 2007, 2008. And now Yvette Cooper is the Remain poster girl. Well, you know, look, people, the vote was held. Do you want to stay in? Do you want to go out? 17.4 million people, uh, you know, the, the largest majority of any election held in this country in modern history. And uh, so the decision has been made. So, you know, we need to get on with it. So we're now what, a little over two months away from the due date for departure. And that departure must be effected. And uh, after that, you can expect the pro frackers to say, see, now, you know, we're not part of the European Union. Uh, we need to be energy independent. Well, what a crock. Because actually we'll be, you know, in just a stronger position. We get barely any of our hydrocarbon imports from the EU. Uh, most of them come from uh, Norway uh, by pipeline or from Qatar. So there is zero risk to our hydrocarbon supply. So all this fear mongering absolutely should stop, but of course it won't stop. But it's down to the independent thinkers, which of course means not the people who read this crud, but the people who are getting their information whoa, from multiple sources and then making their own decisions. So don't expect to see too much in the lamestream media about what occurred at um, uh, Rathin Energy's well site in West Newton. And, uh, you know, obviously freedom of information requests will be being submitted uh, to establish precisely what Rathin Energy have told the Environment Agency and the Health and Safety Executive. Clearly, well site employees were put at risk. The uh, fact that the, the hose smashed the uh, window is somewhat fortunate that there was nobody between uh, the hose and the window because it would have probably taken their head off. So for Rathin Energy to claim this is just a minor incident, you know, uh, is not unbelievable. It's totally believable. It's, it's what we'd expect from these fracking ignorant cowboys. So that's uh, you know, the impromptu uh, live stream for today. So please, please do do a little bit of research. Look on social media at uh, what has occurred at the Rathlin Energy well site at uh, West Newton. And there's uh, certainly some people in the local community that I have a lot of respect for.
and I'm going to be very interested to uh, get uh, their analysis. But, uh, you know, I'd say the uh, first hand reports from those who are monitoring the site, as far as I'm concerned, have much greater credence than anything that David Montague Smith or his um, uh, underlings at Rathlin Energy uh, put out. So anyway, that's it from me uh, for this morning. And uh, I will be back uh, tomorrow morning at uh, 8.30. And um, I know it's gonna be a fresh one right across the country, but uh, hopefully, you know, we might see some clear blue skies. Dream on. Um, depends on the aircraft activity, I guess. So anyway, have a great day and uh, I will catch with you tomorrow. You take care now.